Today we're going to make a witch's hat uh, from a couple different things that I found, a cone and a wreath, and I thought we could put it together to make a hat. I thought it would be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Okay, so this is what we're going to use to make our witch's hat. So I found this cone that I got this at Hobby Lobby and I've seen a lot of people doing hats lately and it kind of gave me an idea. <clears throat> so I bought one of these cones. It was about um, $8 and then I got one of these little vineries. Now this is a small one. This is 10 inches. Now you can get ones just like this that are just the um, unfinished color at the Dollar Tree. So you can just get the exact same thing because we're going to paint it. So it's not going to matter. As a matter of fact, I think I have. Well, I don't see the one that's the exact same thing, but this one came for the Dollar Tree, tree too. And I have, this is the 12 inch. I have the 10 inch as well. So, um, and this actually is a great thing to show you too. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cone and we're going to attach it to this wreath at the bottom. So see, then it makes like a witch's hat. Um, so if you don't want your cone to be as long, one thing you can do is take your wreath form and put it down over your cone like this. That'll make it a little bit shorter. If you want your base to be larger, you can get a 12 inch and put a 10 inch on top of it and then put your cone on it. See, because all these will be wired down. So I'm going to wire this down and then when I'm done wiring it down, then I'm going to paint it. So I'm just going to paint it with regular paint that will cover wood. This is just the Krylon flat paint. And I am going to paint it with the flat paint because I will use the uh, clear coat glossy sealer to put over it because chances are we're probably going to have this, certainly not in the weather, but on our front porch. So, you know, it will at least be exposed somewhat. So I will put these two together and then I'm going to paint it. So what I'm going to do... Oh, and I guess I could kind of tell you kind of what my plans are. I have all kinds of cute little things that I can put on it. I even have a little witch. And lots of ribbon. And then I have um, all kinds of cute little things that are Halloween-ish. So we're going to put our hat together and paint it and then I'll make a big bow for it and then we're just going to kind of add things until we feel like it's right. So it'll be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I have some really great ribbons. I have, um, I love this little, this is this stretchy ribbon and it, it's really great. So. It'll be really great to tie around here. See how great this is? It's very stretchy. So I like that. It's different. We have spider webs. We have pumpkins. And then just some cute Halloween colors. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun doing this. So now that I've kind of shown you what we're going to do, let me get started with the first step. Okay. So you're going to need some floral wire. I would use the thicker floral wire. And I'm just going to turn this sideways like this so you can see what I'm doing. So. I'm just going to take my floral wire and cut pieces. I don't 
think I'm gonna need huge pieces. Let's see how much did I cut. Oh, maybe six inches. I want it to be long enough that I can work with it. So, okay. So all I'm gonna do is take some of this floral wire, run it through my hat, tie it down a couple of times, and I'm just gonna go around in several places doing the same thing. See now this cone has a metal piece at the end, so I wanna make sure that I go around that because I want it to stay on. I don't want to tie it on to this vine because there's always a chance that that vine could break. Okay. So I'm just going to keep cutting. through. Oh, I think I cut that one too short. I want to have enough to make sure I can go through the vine wreath as well. So that's okay. I'll save it and use it on something else. All right. Okay, once I've gotten them all the way around, then I will bring back, and I want to make sure I have the right side. Yep, I think this side's better. So I was just looking for the side that kind of fit it the best. Alright, so what I'll do is I will just take my wires that I've run through my cone and just run them through this base. So I will just stick it through. Like that. I'm going to tie it down. Okay. Now I'm just going to keep going around doing the same thing. So I want to make sure that I get it through at least a good piece of the wreath so that I know it's not going to break off. And then tie my wire together. Okay. I'm going to the opposite end because I don't want to make one side too tight that I can't get through the other side. Okay. So, just tying it down. go over here. I'm going to try to go to the opposite so I can get it tied down and then I can tie in the other pieces. If you have any trouble, you can use your pliers to pull it through. Okay. Let's go over to this side. Okay. 
So I will keep tying this down and then once I get it tied down I will clip them off and just poke them underneath here just to make sure that there's nothing sticking out because if someone if I did end up selling this or I took it downstairs and put it on my table I wouldn't want it to scratch my table. So I'll keep doing this and then as soon as I'm done with that I'm going to take it downstairs and I'm going to paint it. And one of the reasons that I wanted to put the wire on now is because when I paint it it's going to cover this wire too just so you're not really going to see that. So I'll keep doing this. See it's already on there really good. And then I will paint it and come back and we'll start decorating it. So I'll be back. Hey! So I realized when I was editing that my camera cut off <laughs> a big chunk of things I was talking about. So I thought I would just kind of tell you what I was talking about. It, you wouldn't have missed anything. All I did was explain that I was going to make a bow. So of course this is already made. So I just talked about um, making a bow. I showed the ribbons and then talked about you know using the mesh. So I didn't want you to think that the <laughs> there was no transition. So if you think that you missed something, just let me know and I'll be glad to tell you what I did. So on with the video. Okay, so I'm ready to start on my bow. What I have is two the two wires that I cut at 28 inches. And I have all of my spools on my little spool holder. I have the two smaller ones that I'm going to be using. I'm going to use those first. I just like to have the smaller ones at the top. So this is the stretchy kind of ribbon. So when I put this on, I want to be careful that I'm not stretching it too much. But the first thing I want to do is measure my tail. I want to go out to C. So I'm just going to pinch it right where I'm going to put it. I'm going to take my first wire and find the middle and I'm going to tie that twice around where I've just pinched. Just like that. So see, I just have it pulled around these two. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the base and I'm going to go to this what's called a finger. I'm going to tie my bottom piece around this little nail that's down here and I'm going to tuck the wire underneath. Then I'm going to take this top wire and I'm going to go to the left and wrap it around the top of this finger like that. And the reason you're doing that is because when you get done you want to be able to take it back off. Okay, so once I've gotten that done, I will take my ribbon and I will go around this middle piece. Now, I'm going to be using the middle piece, but that doesn't mean you have to. You don't have to use the middle piece. If you're not going to use the middle piece, I'll show you what to do. So if you are going to use the middle piece, you want to come back to where you were here and hold it there. And I'm going to run my second wire right behind these two, these two little ribbons. Because what I want to do is tie off that loop. And I want to tie it, twist it one good time, pull it tight. And the reason that you do that is because it essentially makes doing this almost hands-free. In other words, you don't have to keep holding your hand here because this is now holding it together. So then I will go out to C, 
to my other tail, cut it off, and then I'm going to push it up here and get it out of the way. Okay. Now, you want one of this wire to be up and one to be down. And the reason that you want that is because when you come with your next bow, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to use this to hold it in the middle. So you want it to be going up and down. It just makes it a little easier. But this is what I have to say about this. This is a great tool, especially if you have trouble holding ribbon in your hands. And if you want to do several different ribbons together, it makes it a little easier. Doesn't mean you have to have this. If I didn't have this, what I would do is I would do each individual bow using wire and then I would use one wire to tie them all together because that's essentially what you're doing here. So when I get ready to do my next piece, whoop, and I have this upside down. So remember this up here is the top of your bow. This is the bottom. So when I put a bow in here, when I put a ribbon in here, I want the pretty side to be facing in this direction. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go here. I'm going to measure it out to where I want it to be. I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to go ahead and dovetail my end. Oops. So I'm just folding it over and cutting a little detail. Make sure it's still. Yep. So I want it to be over to C. So then what I'll do is I'll put this wire, remember this wire that we made, and I'm going to go up and go down. See, and what that does is it's going to hold this piece right where I put it. And I'll tell you why this is great. So I have kids, and I might be in here doing something, and five seconds later, my kids come in and they need something. Well, if I'm in the middle of doing a bow and I let go, I'm going to have to do the bow again. But if you use something like this, you can leave and come back and your bow is still going to be in the same spot waiting for you. So that's why I like this. I just think it's great for that. So, what you're going to do now is you can hold it here in the middle or not. It doesn't really matter. You're just going to go around this little peg, come back to the center, pinch it right here in the middle, and do your twist. So you're doing your twist to get that pretty side back up in the front. Okay? Then you just go on to your next peg and you do the same thing. You just come back, pinch, and twist, and this time, so I've gotten my little bow made, so I'm going to go up and down with my wire again. Just twist it on there, like that. So now, I'm only going to do one with this ribbon. So I can go out to C, bend it over, and cut my little detail. Like that. And then I can put it up here just to get it out of the way. Okay? So now I'm done with those two ribbons. So I can just kind of move them aside. probably just flip this around just so I can get better access to the ribbons. So I'll start off by making my little dovetail. Okay. I'm gonna see I've got my wire going up and down. I want to go find my tail, get my spot, put it down, put that ribbon that wire up and down. 
just so if I have to walk away, it's still there. I'll move my tail out of the way, and as you notice, I'm always going to the right to start. So I just go around, just like that. I come back to the center. Like this, pinch, hold it in the center, do my twist, and go around that next peg. Like that. Okay, then come back to the center. Now I'm only going to do one loop with this as well. So, Come back to the center, do my twist, and then I want to go with my wire again, up and down like that to hold it in place. So now I'll go back to C, fold it over, and cut my detail. And then I'm going to put that out of the way. So I'm done with this one. So I'm going to start on my next one. So I'll just do the same thing, fold it over, make my little detail, figure out where I want my tail to be. I want to go to C again. I'm going to pinch it here, go up and down with my wire. <laughs> there we go. Then I'll put my tail out of the way. So see, I can walk away, it come back, and it'll still be in the same spot. So I will go up to my next little finger, come back around, get to the middle. Pinch, hold, twist. Now, if you don't want to hold it, that's okay. You can do this up and down wire thing again. But since I'm just going to be doing, you know, a couple of loops, I'm not going to do that. So I'll come back here, twist. And this is when I'm going to do my wire again. Somehow my wire got off. Oh, there it is. Okay. See, that's why you want to make sure that your wire one stays up and one stays down. So see, you can learn from me. Not to do that. Okay. So one up and one down. Just like that. Go around your loop, come back to the center, pinch, twist, around that peg, back to the center, twist, and then go up and down with that wire. There we go. So now I have back out to C, and I will pinch it, and make my detail. There we go, and then put it out of the way, just like that. So now, we are ready for our last ribbon. So, I'm sure you'll notice that my bow, I have not used three pegs. I'm not sure I'm going to use all three. I may just use two, but. So I'm going to pinch it, make my detail. See, I wanted this to kind of be my, my main focal ribbon. I guess you would say my last ribbon. So I will go here, pinch my little starting point, 
go up and down with the wire here, just like that. And then I will go around the right, just like that. Back to the center, pinch here, twist it. Okay. I hope you can see it with my hand right in the way. <laughs> so I twisted it to get it back to the front, went around that one, bring it back to the center, pinch it, twist it, go around that one, bring it back to the center, pinch it here, twist it, bring it around this one, then come back to the center, pinch it, and twist it. So now I'm ready to do my wire again because I've done two and that's all I'm going to do. I will come out here to see and I will bend it over and make my little cut. Now, now that we've gotten this part done, what you can do is you take this wire that we wrapped around this peg and you're going to undo it just like this, okay, and take the bottom out and undo that and then you can pull this up. Now when you first pull it up, it's going to look like a hot mess, but that's okay. We're going to put this away. We don't need this, we can put this away. Now you have all of these wires. So what you can do is you take your wire, your very first wire, come around and just twist it with the wire that you used Like that. All I'm doing is twisting it on, making it so that I have something to tie onto my hat. Okay? Okay, so now we have our bow that's kind of a mess. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the fluff box. Now I have one of these fluff boxes, and I'll tell you, this is really just a very solid piece of wood. That will hold this down. You can also use your wreath to do this. Of course we'll be doing a hat with this one but there's a little hook on here and I just slide that through and I just wrap it around the little nail that's down here. And all this does is it allows me to move my ribbons around and just fluff everything out and make it look nice. So I'll just kind of move my ribbons kind of in opposite directions. Just kind of makes it, gives it nice little personality. There we go. See, that's easy. That wasn't hard at all. Okay. So when I get the bow like I want it to look, I'm going to put this one over here. <clears throat> Once I get everything in place, I will take it off and we will put it on our hat. Okay, so I will just 
unravel this, slip it out from the hook, move this aside, and then we're going to put it on the hat. So what I thought I would do is I have this adorable, sparkly mesh. It is a 10 by 10. And what I thought I would do is I will cut a few ruffles. I'm going to cut them. Let's see. Where's my cut? There it is. I am going to cut them at about 30. I've got to move a few things here. All right. So I'm just using my mat, which has the measurements on it, and then my rotary cutter just makes things a little bit faster so I'll just measure it out to 30 and just cut it okay see and that's fast okay and then I'm gonna do another one okay That one at 30. Okay. There we go. And today I'm actually going to use wire to do these. Okay. So I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to make a ruffle. So I'm just going to lay it flat and I'm going to walk up to the middle with the part that wants to curl down, just like this. There we go. See there? Now, I'm going to be making what I consider a reverse ruffle. So I'm going to take my wire, and I'm the top part is going to be, see this is the part that's going up. I want it to go up like this. So I am facing the ruffle up. Then I'm going to kind of bend it over and hold it together like this. I'm going to pull my wire tight and I'm going to twist it. Try to get it as tight as I can. Because what I'm trying to do is make this stand up like this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it right through this base. So in between the cone and the wreath, I'm just going to, there's lots of places to stick it in. So I'm just going to do that like that. See? Isn't that cute? Then I'm just going to tie it on underneath, just kind of using some of this wood from the wreath to tie it in with. So I'll just run my wire through it. And the reason I'm using wire is because it's just a little bit difficult to see. It's more difficult to see the wire than it is to see. And if I did it with a pipe cleaner it would be a lot easier to see so let's go on. tie it on really well and then tuck my wire in like that see that isn't that cute I like that so I'm gonna do another one and put it right next to it So just walking my fingers right up the middle, like this. See that this mesh cute? It is so cute. It has all this little sparkle in it. It has the green and the purple and the orange and then of course black. Okay. So I'm just going to cut another piece of wire. And do the same thing. So I'll just 
go around here, pull my ruffle up like this. Whoops. <laughs> I pulled too tight on my wire. So don't do that. Okay. So pull up like this and then tie my wire around just like that. Okay. So like that. What I like is how this is standing up like this. Okay. So then I'll bring my hat back again and I will do the same thing. I'm just going to push it through the base. There we go. Now I got it. There we go. All right. Oh, look at that. Isn't that so cute? So now Okay, so now I want to see where I want to put the bow. Do I want to put it up here? I think I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to continue around the bottom with this mesh. That's exactly what we're going to do. And I tell you, oftentimes when I'm working on a project, I just kind of figure it out as I go along because I never know exactly if it's going to look exactly like I have it pictured in my head. So I'm going to cut two more and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so I'm just going out to the 30 and I'm going to come back here and cut it. Right there. Okay, there's one. Let's do another one. So to the 30, oops, there we go, all right, there we go, and we'll see if that does it, all right, I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple more of my wires, there, there, all right, so I'm going to roll this one out, my bow. If I have trouble with my mesh kind of rolling up on me, I will throw it over the edge of my table. It just seems to really help at least get it going. So then I'll just walk my fingers up through the middle like this. See, normally when I put ruffles on a wreath, I will put them down this way. But I'm going to put them on this way because I want it to stand up. So I'll just run my wire around it and then use my hands get the ends to match. And then I will twist, twist, twist and make it real tight like that. There we go. Then I'll just pull my hat back up and I'll go next to the last one. Just pulling it through and then wrapping it around. This is the only part that's a little bit challenging wrapping it around. There we go. We got it. There we go. Okay. I'll just tuck that back. Now we have three. I think we might be able to get away with one more. So let's give it a try. All right. So the same thing. Just walk up in the middle. This. There we go. Put our wire on. Pull this 
up. And then twist the wire. There we go. All right. Then we'll put the next one in. So I'm just running it through. and then just kind of wrapping it around right in there okay there we go yeah I think that's good ha ha I think that looks so cute all right so now we'll bring our bow back we have a lot of wire on this bow so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to run it through the base of this at the top through some of this wood so I can make sure I can secure it on there well. Right there, there we go. Okay. Okay, so I just ran it through the top right here. Okay. I really had way more wire than I needed. <laughs> But you know, it's better to have too much than not enough. Okay, there we go. Now, once I have it on there, I'm just gonna wrap it around a couple of times. And then I'll cut it off. And I'll wrap that. Okay. Alright, so there we go. So now I'll just re-fluff my ribbon, my bow, I mean. I think I will pull these tails so that they're kind of hanging down and then have my bow kind of fluffed up. Yeah, I like that. There we go. So then I'll just re-fluff my bow, make sure everything's where I want it to be, and I'll pull these around a little bit. There. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And I'll keep working with the bow to get it how I want it, but you know, sometimes that can take a while, so I don't want to make you watch all that but so I have that part done I have a lot of cute little things to add on so I thought this would be really cute so this little spider has a little rubber band attached to it I'm not going to use that so I'm just going to kind of untangle this from him See, because he's kind of meant to hang. I'll just cut that off. Okay. So what I will do is I will take some... Ooh, let's use some of this wire that's left over. I'll take some wire and I will... Okay. So if I ever am trying to do this and I have trouble... I will take like a an auger or a a um, ice pick and I will just go ahead and make a hole and then my wire should be able to go through the same hole Oops. I might need to do a pipe cleaner right here. I'm going to do a pot cleaner with this because I think it will be a little bit easier. Here we go. See? So that's how you do that. Okay. 
and then I will twist it one time just to make sure it's going to stay on and on top of that I will add a little bit of glue so I'll let that sit for a minute and while that's sitting I'm gonna pull out some of this other stuff and see what we can figure out with this let's see I really like these little eyeballs they're just so cute I thought we could use a couple of those so maybe this one so this is just all on here with wire so I'll just cut some of this off gracious there we go this to go maybe oh that looks so cute okay so I'm gonna figure out where I want this to go maybe there oh look at that I like that <laughs> that looks so cute okay so then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put some hot glue on it Okay. Then I'm going to stick it in inside my cone just to make sure it's in there good. And then I'll just kind of play with these. <laughs> I like that. Okay. So I have another one that I can use. Pull this down a bit. Okay. Okay. There we go. So I got the other eyeball. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of my floral tape here to kind of take this stuff together. Okay. So it won't come loose. I want it to stay together as like a little stack. There we go. Okay, sorry, my kids have a friend over, so, okay, so I'm just going to put some glue on it, I'll come over a little bit, I'm going to stick it right down, I love that, I <laughs> think that is so cute, okay, I have another set of eyeballs, so let's use those two as well, we'll have kind of a little eyeball thing going. I like that. Okay. So I want some of this little black sticks with it. So I'll just pull this together just like I did with the last one. that and we'll just use some of our floral tape just wrap it around there because you're not going to see this it's going to be behind the mesh that okay i'll put a little bit of glue on it do the same thing. I'm going to stick it right down in that cone. And then I know 
it won't come out. Look at that. It's cute. See, and this would be a great centerpiece for your table. This really isn't a wreath, but of course it does use mesh and embellishments, so. <laughs> They're having a good time in there. Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to take glue and I'm going to go right down in the cone. See, I'm just pushing it in between these cone pieces. There. Like that. Oh, I like that. Okay, so now our little spider's dry. We're going to have him climbing up the hat. So, all I'm going to do with him is I'm going to stick these right inside the cone like this. And then I'm going to spread his legs out like he's climbing up. There we go. Okay, then I will go on the underneath right in here and I'll just tie it off. There we go. Like that. And there we go. We now have one witch's hat centerpiece. Now, there's a lot of things that you could do with this. You could do the curly method down here. That would be really cute. I have all kinds of other little things you can add in. See, like this. See, these are so cute. It's really easy just to Cut some of this off. Okay. Stick a little glue on it. Okay. And then just run it right down in that cone. See, the great thing about this cone is it's wood, so it's easy just to stick things right in there. There we go. I'm probably going to go ahead and use the rest of these. Actually, I know I am. So let's just go ahead and cut some of these off and put it on. Because that just gives it a little bit more fun. I like fun. Okay. So i got my good amount of glue on it. Let's put it right in here. Stick it down in the base. And there we go. Just get this over a little bit. There we go. All right, we could use this a little bit more over here. So we've got some more right here. So this one I'm going to put a little bit of my foil tape around. Okay. And I tell you, another great thing you can do, when I was at Hobby Lobby the other day, I saw they had bags of these little styrofoam balls. You can take those and just get some of this black grass stuff and just glue them on yourself because that's all they did. You can also put them on your pipe cleaners and your work wreaths and make little balls to go on that. There we go. All right. Well, I think that's all I'm going to put on it because I like it. I really like it. I hope you like it and that it will give you an idea of something to do with one of your own. 
and I have quite a few things planned coming up so please let me know what you think and if you have another idea or something that you want me to show you how to do and I will see you again soon make sure to comment and like and subscribe thanks bye bye